Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to another video. As you can see at the top left, we're going to be reacting to the video on Robert E. Lee from PragerU. So, um, I know a ton of people have done this and I think that it's going to be hilarious to watch this video, see, you know, the, the hot takes that we can get from PragerU. Um, you know, we always have high expectations for them. So, that being said, um, I started recording this video and I'd been about a minute through and then I look at OBS on the side and I see that I'm not recording. So this is going to be a second take and that means that I've seen, I've seen the first minute. So it's, but, but I'll do my best to, you know, convey the same messages that were conveyed the first time. Um, along with that guys, thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so that we can do more fun stuff. I actually, before deciding to make this video, had like three different, um, ideas for what I wanted to do, and I couldn't really decide on which one. So we're going to do all of them, starting with this one, and we have some, um, plans for what to do moving forward. Anyway, thanks again. Let's get to it. Who was Robert E. Lee? Yeah, okay. Nice, okay. The graffiti looks really cool. Like, it's almost like the people are climbing their way up to destroy him, you know? It's like telling of the story. We're on the way up and we're gonna just be like axing it, you know? Statues of great historical figures like Robert E. Lee are being torn down across America. Dude, I hate this narrative. Like statues of great historical figures. No, okay, listen. Nothing is objectively great, right? Like there are people that like I think are good and that other people were, would disagree with me, right? Like, I, I think Marx was great, but there's plenty of people in America that hate the shit out of Marx, right? So, like, you can't objectively label some people as great. For example, I'm sure in England, there's tons of generals that they think were great that fought against America in the war for independence, right? But that doesn't mean that we think of those same people as great because it depends on which side you were on. And considering that the Confederates lost, you don't get to call the losers great because they're the losers. And what were they fighting for? Oh, they were fighting to keep the institution of slavery alive. Oh my God, it's almost like we should condemn them for doing something bad. Crazy, so crazy. Here are some facts about Lee that remind us why his statue should remain. Okay, so in my first take of this video, this little frame was pivotal, all right? Just, just pay attention, right? Let's just read what it says. Here are some facts about Lee that remind us why his statue should remain. This means that everything from this point on, guys, is a point about why the statue should remain. Every point he makes, we're going to evaluate it as a point for why the statue should remain. Okay? Robert E. Lee was connected to George Washington through his father, Light Horse Harry Lee, Washington's cavalry commander, and his wife, Martha Washington's great-granddaughter. Cool. So what does this mean? Right. The last frame said that we're going to learn facts about why the statue should remain. First thing he tells us, Lee's related to Washington. So the point here, right, when we, when we boil it down, is that Lee is good because he is related to Washington. But it takes no effort to realize that that means absolutely nothing. If a serial killer was related to Washington, do we make statues of them? No, because your relationship to, to famous people doesn't warrant anything special for you. You'd have to earn it. 
So the first point here, right, is already ridiculous. But why is it included in the video? Because you're creating like this link, right? The link between Lee and Washington. And when people think of Washington, they think first president of the United States. And so when they think of Lee, they're going to attach the connotation that they have with Washington to Lee. Look, Washington is great. So Lee must by adjacency to Washington also be great. But that's not how that works, right? And all you have to do is pause and think about it to realize why it's not true and what they're trying to get you to feel by mentioning that. Lee's home at Arlington House was just 10 miles from Washington's Mount Vernon. Today, it is the site of Arlington National Cemetery. Yeah, same, same thing here. Same thing, right? Just creating a bridge between two people that otherwise have no relation right like one guy was living in the like the late 1700s and the other guy's living in the like mid to late 1800s no relationship and they, their lives barely had anything to do with each other but all they're doing is establishing a connection to make people who watch this video feel like that relationship warrants something when it doesn't when it absolutely doesn't after 30 strategy. years of military service, Lee led U.S. Marines to crush the attempted slave rebellion by rap. Huh? Military service. Lee led U.S. Marines to crush the attempted slave rebellion by radical abolitionist John Brown in October. To crush the time. attempted slave rebellion. Led U.S. Marines to crush the attempted slave rebellion. U.S. Marines to crush the attempted slave rebellion. U.S. Marines to crush the attempted slave rebellion by rap Like, what? Bro, what? Why does... Who sits... Who did... Okay, first, I'm assuming this was scripted. So whoever the narrator is, the guy reading it, I'm assuming he didn't come up with the script. If he did, he's a moron, right? Like, you actually wrote down these words yourself? Like, damn, I am so sorry. Now, my assumption is that he had scripted and he got paid to say this, right? Like someone hands him a script and is like, hey, read this out loud for us. The person who wrote the script, regardless, how are you so stupid? Like, do you think that this is actually going to resonate with anybody? Like, I'm sure there's a fringe group of people. There is a small group of people that this will resonate with right but I, I can't imagine that the vast majority of conservatives would even find like like their whole point is that they try to like delineate the civil war from military slavery service. talking we about states US rights to crush the attempted slave so you bragging about crushing slave rebellions i don't think that's like a good strategy right like if you're trying to convince people of all the shit that Prager U tries to convince people of? There's no way like you thought this through. Anyway, just just to remind you guys about the, the theme of this entire video is right here. Facts about Lee, about why the statue should remain. And then we come right over here and he tells us because he crushed an attempted slave rebellion. Just just think about that for a moment, right? Like, you have to be so disillusioned to think that, like, this actually means something for why we should keep the statue and not tear it the fuck down. Tempted Slave Rebellion by Radical Abolitionist John Brown in October 1859. So... In the first take, when he said radical abolitionist John Brown, it reminded me of the debate between Warnock and Leffler, um, the two candidates running for the special election in Georgia. And if you guys watch their debate, Warnock or um, Kelly Leffler calls Warnock, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, like 14 times. And I was trying to find the clip of that, but I couldn't. And luckily... I found it now 
So let's watch it. My opponent, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, Ra radical liberal Raphael. These are separate, by the way. Warnock, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, my opponent, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, my opponent, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, my opponent. Like, like, and then 21. 21 co-conspirators had wanna, seized a federal hear it again. October 18th by radical abolitionist John Brown. We've just replaced radical abolitionists with radical liberal. Like, there's not much different. And, and the funny thing is, I, my, my theory is that there's a slim chance, all right? Hear me out. And maybe we can do a deep dive on this and, and see, see if I'm right. But there is a slim chance that whoever is doing the like PR around these videos might actually be working in the Georgia Senate race too, right? And they're kind of like coaching the candidates through it and it's probably like they're, they're suggesting like this certain rhetoric, rhetoric, right? Like I am absolutely certain that the only reason Leffler is calling Warnock a radical liberal 15 times in a debate is because like, that's the strategy that her campaign has come up with. Just like associate the two, right? Radical or not. But that seems like it's this exact same strategy going on here. Radical abolitionist John Brown. As if abolitionism was radical. Like, do you guys think it was radical? I, I don't think it was radical. I think what is radical is creating an institution where you systematically and effectively just destroy and dehumanize people for the sake of free labor. I think I think that's pretty radical. Um, I think wanting to get rid of that system is pretty fucking normal. I think that makes a lot of sense. In October 1859, 21 co-conspirators had seized a federal armory and all of them co-conspirators by the way like like look at the language they use this is the biggest thing that like i i notice about prager you and their content the rhetoric that they use is meant to incite certain emotion in their viewers because that is the only way that people will genuinely think that these things make sense is if they have emotional connotation you don't none of this is rational you can't make this rational they know that they know it's not rational that's why they don't cite shit because it's not about the information it's about the emotional context that they present things with co-conspirator right when we say co-conspirator today what do we think of we think of fraud, we think of people that are committing crimes, we think of like terrorism is an association with co-conspirator, right? That is the language we, that's like the context in which we use co-conspirator today. And then they're using it to describe a slave rebellion to associate the two connotations that we have between the, those events. Them were killed or captured, including John Brown, who was tried and hanged for treason. Is this, like, oh my god. Again, look at the painting John Brown as a criminal, right? Tried, hanged, treason. The three bolded words that are blasting you in the face, right? Tried means that this was illegal. Hanged, right? They killed him in treason, right? Three words with three very specific connotations. Tried also implies that he was given a fair trial, right? Like he was tried and they found him guilty of treason. But that means that rebelling against slavery was treason. That's the takeaway. 
Lee deemed slavery a moral and political evil in any Oh, country. here it comes. Can... Here it comes. Here's the... Oh, they did. he didn't like slavery. Oh, no. He, did, he just had to fight for the South. Considered it a greater evil to the white man than to the black race, since blacks are immeasurably better off here than in Africa. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <sighs> Look. There's a certain thought process we have to follow, right? The first step in saying this is that you assume about what it means to be better off, what is valuable, right? And you push that onto someone else right that's that's the engagement that happens here and so before we can even talk about where it's better you don't get to make that hurdle right if someone told washington all right lee's favorite relative that he would have been better off in england immeasurably better off in England than in North America, that doesn't mean shit. Because they don't get to decide what Washington thought was meaningful. Rather than living a cushy life in England, he fought a revolution in America. Right? That's the problem with this kind of language because b before you even get to say oh but that's true you don't you never get to that point you never even have the opportunity to try to make that argument because your foundation is flawed from from the start right the mental gymnastics you're doing opposing is secession lee foresaw no greater calamity for the country than a dissolution of the union but when Virginia seceded in a close vote, Lee resigned his commission. So then fight to keep the union together. And if they and if they secede, then you fight for the union because you know that if the union wins, the country's back together. You complete moron. Despite like this doesn't make sense. Like you know that the guy just wanted forces. to fight for Virginia. He opted to organize the defense of his native state. Didn't shit about like after four years as Confederate commander, he became an icon of reconciliation him. upon his surrender. As president of Virginia's Washington College, he favored education for freed slaves, but opposed their right to vote. What, why is that? A, why is that a good thing? Remember again, the twenty-second mark. Remind us why his statue should remain. He favored education for freed slaves, but opposed their right to vote. Opposed the right to vote. Lee died from a stroke in 1870 and is buried beneath Lee Chapel in what's now Washington and Lee University. His legendary warhorse, Traveler, rests in a plot nearby. They should also change the name of the school while we're at it. Tear down the statue, change the name of the school. That's what we do to people who belong in the history books, not on statues. Bye. And you know, when I was going to this video, I noticed one more thing, and this is how I'm gonna close out. Um, the description here is writers are tearing down statues of great American historical figures, including Robert E. Lee. Why should he be remembered? Keyword, why should he be remembered? So they want us to think that statues allow us to remember people in history. That's not true. Statues honor people in history. Books allow us to remember history. So we can write about Lee and why what he did was wrong, but we don't honor it with a statue. We tear it down and we honor the people who were on the right side of history because that's what we, people with hindsight, have the privilege of doing. That we know who was right and who was wrong. They should have known who was right and who was wrong. Honestly, I don't know what I was even going where, with that. Like, a, a child can tell you that what they were doing was wrong. So I don't even know. Yeah, no, that, that, like, that's it. Tear down the statues. It's simple. It's easy.
Stop making it an emotional thing. Just do it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I'm going to full screen this because I don't want to. Anyway. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, videos like this, honestly, are ridiculous. But I think that it's good to talk about them and break them down so that we have um, ways to address, one, people that believe in this kind of stuff, you know, mainly. But just new ways of thinking about, like, the information. Because it, it's, it's easy for everybody to understand the problems with it, like, at face value. But then there's, like, different perspectives on, like, how we can discuss the problems. So um, I hope... I accomplished that. I hope I said something that maybe you hadn't heard in other videos on the topic um, or on this video specifically. But with that being said, don't forget to do all the liking, the subbing and all that. Thank you guys so much and have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Where is it? There we go. Peace, guys.